So, um, hmm. Where are we now? Should we look at HackMD? I'll share your screen yeah. so you can show these things. Yeah. So, so as a quick, like, uh, like how, to, how to say, like, collapse everything together. So what we have learned so far. Mm -hmm. So in your jobs, you usually want to, like, you want, take your code to Triton. You usually want to, like, take your data to, there, take your code there. You write the Slurm script for it. Of course, you can try it first interactively and see how it works. But then at some point, you need to write a Slurm script for it. You specify, like, what requirements you want for that Slurm script. Then you, uh, uh, you these requirements can include me memory, or always include memory and time. But they can also include number of CPUs, if it is a shared memory uh, supporting, a shared memory parallelism supporting code. It can include the number of tasks, if it's uh, MPI code. It can include the number of GPUs if it's a GPU supported code. And if you you run it once, most likely this kind of a ASPAT script, and then you think about, okay, like I want to run this 100 times, so how do I do it? You make an array out of that whole, whole bunch, and then you run it 100 times and do some mapping of array index to some parameters. And that's how you basically like scale one step at a time. You go from like, uh, like how do I do this once to how do I do this ma parallel, how do I do this multiple times? And then you, at the end, you get like this massive speed up. And that's how you, it goes. Like basically you have to do these individual steps. So you get down to this like uh, polynomial curve, <laughs> basically like, or you, you get this kind of a, a speed up. Yeah. And, and that's how you like improve your workflow because like you, you have to like get out of the idea of using only one computer or using you you at, at the end you think about jobs you don't think about uh, computers or anything like that you think about like okay how many how many jobs have i run recently and 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 that is the unit that you start to measure yeah okay uh, yeah this Day was probably a bit hectic. We had lots <laughs> of ground to cover, uh, but I hope you liked it. And uh, please leave us feedback, like and sus subscribe. And how does it go? Like, yeah, put put feedback on the on the HackMD and uh, do give us uh, like yeah. instru instructions and suggestions. How could we improve the course? Yeah. Uh, we have a little. The material uh, is available in our wiki. So there's even more information there. There's specialized cases for applications in the applications page. If those are crap, ask us, come to Garage. We can together work to create a better application space so that it helps other users. Uh, and have it, like if you have problems, uh, create a workflow for your specific case, come and ask us and we'll try to help you with that. So that's kind of a, like the, the way we operate that basically we try to provide the documentation as much as we can, but the, everybody has a lot of differences in their workflows. And there's usually few few things that need to be tweaked in order to get the full benefit mm -hmm. of the cluster system. But like the general uh, big lines, I hope uh, you got it from, uh, gathered that from this course. Yeah. There's a little bit of an outro, which we can talk about here. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll pull this here. So hmm, I didn't write this, so I'm reading it as it comes. So where to go next? So set your, actually, I need to copy this. Where did it come from? Hmm, yeah, what's your next learning goal? So it could be that you need to, um, well, it shouldn't be try to do everything perfectly. It should be always trying to make things a little bit better. Um, on the course webpage, we have some different um, follow-up suggestions. So there's a workshop called Code Refinery, and it really goes into 
depth about the programming side of things here. So on here, you can learn about how to write better code. So, uh, it's not about the programming itself, but about the version control and testing and modularity and all these kinds of things. People generally think that this is one of the best courses they've ever attended. There's this online course we make called Hands-On Scientific Computing. So what we cover now is the top level of that, but it goes over a lot of the basics. Like if you think that the Linux shell scripting or the Linux usage and things like that are the difficulty, you can look at that in order to find out a lot more and sort of uh, make yourself more well-rounded for all these things. There's a project we run called Research Software Hour, which basically is us on Twitch talking for an hour or so about various topics. And there's some that may be relevant. So there's cluster etiquette, like there's what you can do, but what should you do? And then on how to tame the cluster, there's sort of a complete example of building up from starting a new code to running it in parallel. Um, yeah, well, maybe I can just directly share this thing here that I'm looking at. Mm. Yeah, so your next learning goal there's this article that I will paste into HackMD. Um, there's lots of different small steps you can make. Oh, uh, that's what I already said. And if you have any questions or things feel overwhelming, you can come talk to us. But also not just us, try to talk to each other about these things. The best place times that I've learned things have been in a research group where I've actually worked with other people um, hands on very often. And, you know, there's all these tips and practical tips and so on. And I think it can often be that we're very isolated when we're doing work. So you need to do your best to find joint projects to do with people to learn. Um, hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I can I can also att attest to that that like if you ever ever coded anything uh, at some point well you realize that most of your stuff is crap and somebody else has already created a better version of what you have created and th that's not the, the, like a disheartening thing at least to me like that that is all almost always a relief uh, that okay I I finally like found a, like a good solution to the problem that was really hard but it, it of course it doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to code your own stuff it's a good thing to do but at the same time if you really need to do something like uh, you need something that is, uh, that is important for your research or it's important uh, that you get it working and stuff like that it's usually best to go with the community like not, not uh, go alone at it because like some of these problems they are really hard and it's it's a uh, it's better to to uh google uh find what other people are doing find tools that other people are using and try to go with those because then like it's not only about like uh like saving time so you don't have to code the same tools it's also like if you face problems you don't have to face them themselves uh, alone because other people are using the same tools you know that okay other people have managed to do it uh, so so this kind of like get into the the workflow where basically like I, I I personally at least work in a way where I try to solve some problem if I don't solve the problem at some time I'm like okay now I'll like look at the cheat codes basically how do I mm. go through this so it's like many of these programming uh, questions are like if you ever played like old school like uh, adventure uh, games like Monkey Island or something. Sometimes the the puzzles are really rewarding and they feel really good, but sometimes the puzzles are like <laughs> like straight out of uh, somebody's keister. So they're like they're not uh, <clears throat> they're not something that uh, were designed they were designed for like an inside joke or something like that. And 
some of this programming stuff is, is similar. So basically, you wouldn't never guess the solution for the problem yourself. Mm -hmm. You had to look it up from a FAQ or something. And it's not a like a cheating. It's not like like you're in a test and you are cheating because you're looking at the answers. Like the uh, the actual important stuff is to the re the results that you're doing, like the scientific research you're doing. It doesn't really matter like if you in the way uh, utilize some other tools that other people are using. In in fact, it's they're completely the opposite. It's better that you utilize the same tools because then other people can relate to that thing. They don't have to look at through your code and see if your code is like uh, accurate. Like we take mm -hmm. lots of things for granted. We take for granted that NumPy gives us correct answers. <laughs> I've never looked at like how NumPy does integration. Like, and, and I, I don't intend to like, I, I expect that somebody there has done it for me and, and has done the analysis of the algorithms that they are accurate. So, so keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. So basically yeah. look, look outside, uh, don't don't uh, waste too much time uh, working with a problem that somebody else has already solved. Mm -hmm. uh, like one thing I realized, you know, when we are in courses, we're taught that if you copy from someone else, then it's plagiarism. But you can't survive in research unless you are building on top of the best things that other people have learned, and that's something that's really important to keep in mind. Um, hmm. I guess we can talk about future courses and so on. So we have, we routinely have a lot of different courses going on. This is perhaps our flagship course along with Code Refinery. Um, hmm. If you want to help us with our courses, then by all means, please do. So you know how to find us. I guess our dream is to make the course larger and like somehow allow more people to attend. We're at a point where, well, almost anyone in the world can possibly stay and watch this. But also even within Alta, we are nine people who have other stuff to do. And you know, any help that we can get from interested people who just really like teaching and care about this, that is great for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Simo, I can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah, so if you want to share quickly my screen, I can show you oh. the, uh, the YouTube channel. So basically, uh, they are uh, some of the some of the courses that we have previously given. They are available in uh, in like YouTube as videos, like, uh, uh, well, various of these courses. And then we have, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's uh, actually a lot of stuff there now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's starting to get loud. So, so for example, the MATLAB basics that was given last year, it's here. Uh, then there's like these one shots by Richard, uh, like this small videos. Yeah. We want, wanted to do more of these. Uh, hopefully, in the future, we have time to do more of these. Uh, we mentioned then, FCCI Tech. Yeah, we have this uh, this tech series for those people who are interested in how this cluster has been set up. So we have this this talk on how uh, how we have set up, like for example, how we have installed our software and stuff like that. Uh, it's not currently here, but yeah. at some point, most likely, it will be. But yes, yeah, so, so we have uh, like this behind the scenes stuff here, if yeah. you're interested in the technical side. And then, of course, we have the scientific computing in practice lecture se series with, and this course is part of that as well. In the, we are going to be having some of these courses uh, done again in the future, most likely, like uh, the courses in the archive. But uh, for example, in August, uh, Jagna will be keeping a, uh, giving a course on Julia programming. Uh, if you're interested in that, mm -hmm. Julia's up, up and coming, nice, uh, nice language. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, well, we have materials uh, for our previous courses on Python for scientific computing, if you haven't yeah. done that. And I gave a course on like data analysis workflows for machine learning and stuff like that. So yeah, look at yeah. these, look at the CSC has 
good courses as well. There are plenty of sources for good materials. Yeah. Also, any feedback on the format of the course? Did you like the Twitch and HackMD and Zoom format? I know some people say there's a lot to watch, but really we imagine that you can do with watching less. So Zoom is completely optional. Um, and even HackMD, we expect it can be hidden unless you're asking a question. Um, or if you want to focus on other things. Let's see, what else? Um, yeah, at some point, maybe, I don't know. Um, we probably have the, like, we needed to skip the scientific programming uh, um, yeah. introduction by Ivan and me uh, uh, about, like, how to code these MPI and OpenMP programs. But uh, maybe we'll have it at some point as this, like, mm -hmm. workshop or something. Maybe we'll have, like, if you're interested in something, let us know, like, in the chat, in the... Uh, email, I don't know, like all the usual channels, Gagas, like, like, let us know what, what you're interested in and we can design courses around those interests. Yeah. So who else can we think? So there's, well, from the first day, there's Ivan and Simpa and UC and Yarno who all presented different material and also many more people who have been watching the hack and answering all these questions. It's not yeah, just and, us. Um, yeah, and you can go on and everybody helped a lot. Yes, oh yeah, right up on stock yesterday. So maybe we can stop the stream for now. We'll continue watching the hack MD. And if you're in the learner Zoom, maybe Simo and I can drop there to talk with you directly. Yeah. If you'd like that. <laughs> That's like we're turning off the TV show and going to the stage door to talk mm. to people for the analogy. Okay, well, let's see. Is there anything else in HackMD to comment on? Um, yeah, please give us feedback. Tell us what was good, what wasn't good. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so... Anything else, Simo, before we turn off? No, I think like uh, there's lots of interesting topics in the HackMD for us to mm -hmm. digest after the course. Like I, I think, uh, well, we had like, yeah, it's, it's there was this one uh, comment that basically if you got these topics could be like one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And that's true. Uh, but but at the same time, like like we were, I was joking this morning that like at one point, like if we add days, like we, uh, I noticed that we could have used more time for many mm -hmm. of these topics, but if we add more ta days, it turns from a course into a festival. Uh, and <laughs> like, like yeah. then, then it's like a coding festival of two weeks or something. Yeah. And, uh, that that becomes like uh, yeah problematic like, as well. Yeah. So because like we like, can, yeah, it's sometimes yeah. hard to generalize and also like, like uh, no. This is a kickstart course, so maybe a good model is we have the two-day kickstart course. It doesn't cover everything, but then every week during the garage or some session, we do it again, and we cover one of the topics in more depth. Mm. Because I mean, yeah, we'll have to we'll yeah. have to figure out like some sort. But yeah, yeah it's it's like touch like, and go kind of thing yeah. uh, with these kinds of uh, yeah things. If you're interested, then. Let us know because, like, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's all about like like all of our work basically is is just supporting the research mm -hmm. and like it's like if we don't know what to support, then uh, we just we're just guessing because like yeah. some of us are involved in, in research projects uh, directly or indirectly, but uh, most of our like we need to we get a glimpses of what our users are doing from what they are doing and how they. Uh, ask for us for help but mm -hmm. if we don't know what they're doing then we don't know what they need and uh, mm -hmm. and if they don't tell us what they're doing then we don't know what to do and and it's kind of this kind of a like it's all about discussion yeah. and all about uh getting access uh yeah and being at the same page because like our job is to support you and uh in order to 
us to support you we need to know what what's going on but mm -hmm. of course it's great to uh like design all kinds of like different courses that you might need yeah okay so see some of y'all in zoom shortly thanks yeah. for attending yeah bye bye